Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. Today I am part of a blog hop for the new Simonses stamp products. Now I'm going to be using some fun new things in this video, but I'm also going to be showing you some fun techniques. So I am making a shaped balloon card today. I love shaped cards because it's something unique and something that Hallmark doesn't do. So I'm doing the shaped balloon today, but I'm also going to show you some stenciling techniques and also some heat embossing techniques like I did on that star there. So this is the die that I, die set that I used for my card. So I love this set. This is something that I actually begged Christina to design. I think it's just so much fun. That large balloon there is the size of a note card, so we can make a card out of it. Now I'm just cutting them apart because they come connected. I'm using some wire cutters to do this. It's very easy to do. Now there are a bunch of different balloon dies in here. I love the big size of them. I really like this biggest one because look at it's the perfect size to fit into an envelope. So this is just a regular four and a quarter by five and a half card and you can see how it would fit on there. Now you could layer up some balloons and do some fun things with it. I love that big circle shaped balloon too. But for today's card I'm just going to use that biggest size one to make a shaped card out of it. Now if you don't have these dies you could always draw hand draw one or print one and trace it. But I really think this die set is awesome because it has a bunch of different sizes in there. We're going to start by die cutting the balloon and I'm actually using one of the new Simonses stamp card stocks. This is a beautiful color. It's called surf blue. It's like a soft kind of pool color, a little bit more blue than your typical pool color. It's just gorgeous. I'm going to die cut the largest balloon from this and I'm actually going to cut two of them. But one of them I'm going to set aside till later. So you're going to go ahead and cut two while we're here but we're only going to use one for now. I put a little temporary adhesive on the back of the balloon just to hold it to my table while I tape this new stencil on top. I love this dot stencil. And I'm just going to tape this on in place so it doesn't shift. I have the new Simon Says Stamp Surf Blue Ink, which matches the cardstock. And I'm using a sponge dauber, and I'm just going to put a dab of this color over each of the holes. I do a little twist also as I do it, or I just kind of press firmly, and you can get perfect dots. They'll look a little uneven, dark, and splotchy at first, but this ink slowly absorbs into the paper and gives you smooth results. So this is a pretty quick way to add this color. You could also mist over it if you want to. So you can see that I just think it's beautiful, and again, that will even out over time. But I decided to take this a step further, so I'm going to put the stencil back on. I didn't have to take it off, but I'm going to put it back on and actually put some clear embossing paste over it. If you don't have the embossing paste, you could press Versamark over here and add some clear embossing powder. But I love this paste because it gives texture and dimension. So this is a little bit different than the white paste. The white paste is a little more like a frosting. This is a little more wet and it doesn't look so great when you first put it on. However, when it dries, it's clear and just beautiful. So when you first do this, don't freak out if it looks a little bad at first, but it will dry nice and clear. You do want to get this as smooth as possible because it doesn't have like that soft texture of a embossing of the white embossing paste. This is more of a smooth texture. So you want to get it nice and smooth. So you see it doesn't look so hot right now, but I'm just going to take it with my tweezers and set it aside to dry for a bit and it'll end up with this great texture that's clear and that blue underneath shows through. And by the way, at this end of this video, I'm going to show you a closer look at the new colors of Simon Says Inks. But let's go ahead and do the embossed greeting across this strip. I'm going to use one of the new stamp sets for the first greeting. I love this set because it's got lots of long greetings and some really great sentiments on here. I love a good sentiment stamp set. I like that these are big and bold. I'm going to use the one that says you're pretty awesome. This is a birthday card, but I wanted to use some, some different kinds of greetings. They don't all have to say happy birthday on them. So I'm just inking up this great sentiment with Versamark ink, and I'm going to stamp it along the bottom edge of a piece of white cardstock. This just makes it easier to make it straight. Now I have my liquid platinum ranger embossing powder that I'm going to add. This is that silver embossing powder that has a warmth to it, so it's more of like a champagne color. So I'm going to shake it on and then heat it up so you get the nice heat embossed image. Now I wanted to add something else to this, so I'm grabbing one of the other new sentiment sets from Simon's Stamp that they have in this release. I like that it says, it's your day and we love you, and I thought that worked perfectly with this. I love putting different sentiments together. It's a great way to build on um, onto a sentiment, also get more out of the sentiments you have. So now that I have those done, I'm going to take my trimmer and trim it off, and I have that nice even strip. Now I could take this and kind of glue it across the card and cut the ends off, but look at it, it's a little bit tight in that four and a quarter by five and a half envelope. 
So I'm actually going to switch this over and I'm going to put this card into a 5 by 7 envelope. I just thought the size would be better so I can have this strip hanging off the sides of the card. You could put it in the other and trim it off if you wanted to, but I really wanted a banner look over the card. I put foam adhesive along the back of the strip and I'm adding it to the card. And now I want to create that banner, that folded look on the side there. You see how it kind of folds behind the card and then sticks out the side? This is how I do it. It's very easy to do. I, instead of using a scoreboard, because you really don't need one, if you have a trimmer with the ledge, you could just use that. I'm just going to put this in my trimmer and kind of straighten that up on there, straighten the strip, and just put a little score line right outside the balloon. So right on the edge of that white cardstock strip, right next to the balloon's edge. And I'll put one over here too. I'm doing them the same on both sides, and that just helps me give a nice fold on the side here. So I'm just going to fold it backwards to the back of the balloon. And now it's time to do those little folds on the side. This is really easy and I don't measure it. I just hold the back. I'm just gonna push this to the back and then pull the end out and kind of fold it at an angle and push my fingers on it to kind of fold, do that little fold behind the balloon. So this just sticks out at a little bit of an angle. So now that I have it, I'm gonna put some adhesive on that little inside flap so that it glues to the back of my balloon. And then I'm gonna take a tiny piece of foam tape and put it in this little fold just so it gets some dimension. You could glue this all flat on there if you wanted to. And so you can see what that little fold looks like from behind. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. I'm just eyeballing it. Once again, no need to measure. Doing a little fold on the back, gonna put some adhesive on that tiny little area so that it glues to the back of the balloon. And now another little piece of foam tape underneath there just so I can have that added dimension. So it looks like this is a banner just kind of flowing around the balloon. Now I wanna do a little V edge. So I'm just going to cut these straight so that they're about the same length on both sides. And I'll do a little cut down the center. And then I will take my scissors and cut from the corner to the top of that cut and the corner to the top of the cut again. That's a great way to get the perfect V. You could also use the corner of a square punch if you wanted to. So again, down the center, cut from the corner to the top of the cut, and then on the other side. And there we have a banner that looks like it's kind of floating right along that balloon. Now I'm going to do a quick check to make sure this will still fit in my 5x7 envelope, and it does. So now it's time to turn this into a card. So this is where the other balloon shape that we die cut comes into play. I'm going to take this and put this into my trimmer so that I have that little ledge to follow. I'm going to straighten that up the best I can. I'm going to do a little score line right there, about, through about a half inch from the top of the balloon. And I want to score it really well so that's a nice fold. Now I'm going to put adhesive just above that score line and put a lot on there because you really want this to stay because this is your card. And I'm going to just take these and lay them right on top of each other. And this creates the hinge that will allow this to open like a card. So you can take any die cut or hand cut shape put two of them together and create a shaped card. And I love that they're super unique, something that you can't really buy. Now I decided to also make this stand up. See, it didn't want to stand up on its own. Some people like a card to stand up. So if you cut a little flat edge on the back piece only, that's enough for it to stand up. So it still looks pretty from the front, but it will still stand up. So now I decided I wanted to have a happy birthday greeting on the inside, so I'm just going to show you this real quick. I just picked it from one of the new Simon Says Stamp birthday sets, and I just uh, heat emboss the same embossing powder on the inside of the card so it matches the outside. So now it's time to add those heat embossed stars. I love to do this. This is a great way to take your embellishments and make them match your embossed greeting. So I have a strip of just scrap cardstock here. I'm putting adhesive down it just to hold these stars temporarily onto the strip because I don't want to burn my fingers when I do this. You could also use the sticky part of a post-it note if you wanted to. Now I'm going to take Versamark ink, press it all over these stars so that they're completely coated with this sticky ink. And now I'm going to take that same embossing powder from before and shake it onto all of the stars. So now this, I can hold onto the scrap paper instead of each of those individual stars, and I can heat them all up at once and very quickly. So basically that white cardstock is just a handle. And there we have some heat embossed stars that will perfectly match our greeting. However, I wanted them to be thicker, so what I'm going to do is actually take my Versamark ink pad and press it again onto that embossing. I didn't let it dry completely. You might want to let it dry completely first. And so it's nice and wet again, so I'm going to put on another coat of the embossing powder. So it's going to kind of um, pull up on top of the die cuts, making it look a little bit extra thick. This is a great way to create your own embellishments, and I think it really works with the embossing of the greeting. And by the way, you can see here that the clear embossing paste really dries nicely. Even though it didn't look like it was going to, it really does dry, dry nicely and give a great dimension and shine. 
So now I have some clear foam tape here. This is from Cooltac. I love this stuff. I'll have links below. And I'm going to put these on the back of the stars. I didn't want my foam adhesive showing through, so I put this clear adhesive on it. And so I'm just going to add three little stars here. Now I had made more stars, but I decided not to use them. I thought it was a little bit distracting from all those fun polka dots in the background. So I'll save those extra stars that I have for another project. I did decide to take one of the little stars and put them on the inside of the card, just so that the inside ties better with the outside. So I'm just going to put some regular adhesive on the back of this little guy and add him to the inside of the card. Now there's one last thing I feel like all balloons need, and that's a fun string hanging off the bottom of them. However, I didn't want the string just kind of hanging there when you take it out of the envelope. I wanted it to have some fun loops in it. And here's the trick that I do for it. I just love this technique. I'm just using some gray baker's twine. For some reason, I never use baker's twine, but I thought it would work here. And I'm just tying it around in a double knot around the, the bottom of the balloon on the front of the card only. We don't want to tie our card shut. So now that I've got it here, I wanted to make those little loops. So what I do is I take the Studio Multi Matte Medium, which is a great adhesive, but it's also kind of um, perfect at taking something and making it keep its shape. It's hard to describe, but watch how I do this. I just take a little dab of this, I put it on my fingers, and I just run it all over, just rub it all over the twine. It's just, you know, you don't need much, just a thin coating. It's not like you want it dripping off. And I just kind of twist it so that it gets all over the twine. Now I'm going to take my card, lay it on the table, and start forming little loops. The key is you want to make sure that they're touching. See where it crosses over in a loop? You want to make sure it's touching. That's why I press there. Because when it dries, you want that to stay kind of formed in that way. Now this will dry nice and matte, and it won't be too firm. It'll just have a little bit of stiffness to it. Just enough to keep its shape as you put it through into an envelope and through the mail. So now that I have that one loop done, I'm going to go over and do the same thing on the other side here. This really doesn't take m very much time to dry. I think I left it for maybe five or ten minutes and I came back and it was done. So now I have my loops. I'm going to just let them dry. You can go back and kind of push them into shape because it really will hold it quite nicely. So now that it's dried, I'm going to come back and look at it. It's got that great shape. So you can just stuff this into an envelope and when it comes out, it'll have those fun loops. I really think this adds to the fun of the balloon card. So this also, by the way, I've made a kite card before, and this works well for it too. And so you can take all this and stuff it into your 5x7 envelope, and it should work perfectly. So I apologize for putting so much into one video, but I really wanted to show you some of these fun techniques on the one card. Now, before we go, I wanted to show you a closer look at the new Simon Says Stamp inks. I know I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of questions about these new cl colors, and I'll do a better comparison later on on my blog. But I wanted to show you they have five new colors of the Simon Says Stamp inks. There's Doll Pink, Cotton Candy, Mint, Surf Blue, and Audrey Blue. So here's a comparison with the Hero Arts colors because these inks are very similar. I love them both very much. You can see the Doll Pink is a little more vibrant and darker than the Hero Arts inks. The Mint Simon Says Stamp ink is a little bit lighter than the Hero Arts Mint Julep. And the Audrey Blue and Surf Blue are a little more blue than the Hero Arts Tide Pool and Soft Pool. And I just love these colors. I think they're beautiful and a great addition to your ink collection. And again, in the future, I'll show a better comparison of this and also show you how I'm currently doing all my ink comparisons. Instead of my little ink swatch book, I've switched to something else, and I will be sharing that too. But I wanted to give you a quick overview of how these colors compare with colors that you might already have. So if you're interested in any of these products, they're linked below in my YouTube description. I also have lots of things going on over my blog, including a hop that shows you more ideas and a giveaway. So be sure to stop by there. And thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see you again in a future video.